So, we will continue our last session on the SOI MOSFETs and this is lecture number 4 in that series of uh, SOI MOSFETs. We will discuss subthreshold swing in the SOI MOSFET and some short channel effects and the fin fat. <coughs> Just to recall what we did in the bulk MOSFET, this is the subthreshold region where the you observe the current below the threshold voltage. Okay. So, we saw that current is exponential there given by an expression like this. Now, n is the factor which decides how fast it you are able to turn off, how quickly the slope. So, if n is equal to 1, we know that it is 60 millivolts per decade. So, you would like to turn it off with the very small change in voltage. So, n should be as close to ideal as possible. 60 millivolts okay, per decade. So, we also saw that this n can be determined from this relationship delta V g s by delta psi of s. It is a it is tells us the how good is a coupling between the gate and the channel. If the delta psi s is delta V g s coupling is excellent. Okay. Now, so then n is equal to 1, but since there is a depletion layer here, we saw that you can derive this delta Vgs by delta psi of s using this equivalent circuit. So, that we have shown that that n is equal to delta Vgs by delta psi of s using this equivalent circuit is 1 plus C d by C oxide. C d is the depletion layer, there is a depletion layer there, their capacitance. It is a bulk MOSFET or partially depleted SOI MOSFET, whatever, both same. C oxide per unit area, C depletion per unit area, that is the thing. Now, what we are trying to point out here is that N is the one which decides your subthreshold swing or subthreshold slope. Okay, you want to keep it as close to 1 as possible. Now, that N is decided by what is the capacitance between this point and the ground point in this case it is C d. If there is another capacitor parallel to that C d like the D i t, we saw that that will become larger, effective capacitance becomes larger. So, this n will become, become larger that is D i d increase D i t increases the slope. Suppose there is a capacitor in series with C d, then the entire C effective will come down. Let us see how it works out in S O I MOSFET. In S O I MOSFET, you can see that is the, the red colored or the oxide thicknesses. I have deliberately shown uh, different thicknesses, it does not matter. So, you have got back oxide, you have got the front oxide, and I am showing a situation where you apply voltage to the front gate and the back gate is grounded. You can extend it to both gates so biased. So, that means actually front gate will be inverted. So, if I want to find out the subthreshold slope, See, in this case, since this is grounded, it will be the front gate, it will be conducting that is the channel. And if I choose the doping low and the thickness low, small, it will be a fully depleted case. So, when it is fully depleted between the gate and the ground, you can see there is a capacitance front oxide. Then, this capacitance between this point and this point, silicon capacitance, which is actually epsilon silicon divided by T silicon. Okay. And then, in series with that, you have got this back oxide capacitance. Thicker the back oxide capacitance, smaller will be the capacitance. Now, what we pointed out in our, in our previous slide is, whichever channel current you are observing, from that point to ground point, how much is the capacitance present? You can see that, that is the channel where the surface potential is psi, S, psi SF. So, if I want to find out that n, I must have delta V g s by delta psi SF. That you can get from this equivalent circuit, front gate, silicon, back gate, all three capacitors in series. So, from this point, from the front channel to ground, the total capacitance is a series combination of C S and C ox V. Particularly, if the C ox is thicker, this capacitance will be smaller, 
and this capacitance C effective okay, what we are showing here that is shown here as C effective. So, between the channel and the sub ground you have got one effective capacitance which is actually C ox into C ox B by this series combination. So, if C ox B is small this is going to be small smaller than what you get in the usual MOSFET. So, the sub threshold slope this is n factor is 1 plus C effective by C oxide f. Sub, sub threshold swing is k t by q log term 10 that is 60 milli volts into 1 plus this quantity that is n factor. Now, you can have the C effective very small compared to C oxide f particularly when the C oxide is front gate oxide is thin. So, you can get sub threshold swing very very close to y beta on 10 that is 60 milli volts. Okay. So, n is much closer to 1 in fully depleted F t is fully depleted S y then partially depleted that is partially depleted or even bulk MOSFET. So, okay. so, you will get less than that and bulk MOSFET also be less than bulk MOSFET. Thicker back oxide helps in reducing the threshold swing. Okay, but you may not have all the time thick oxide, but you may use it as a double gate MOSFET, you will see how it works out. Then the coupling between the gate and the source will be excellent and you will get 60 milli volts per decade. Then you go to double gate MOSFET operation and when this whole thing is depleted, we will see how it comes up. And uh, okay. But otherwise, what you have to understand is when the whole thing is depleted, whatever gate voltage you change beyond that point it goes into the junction we have discussed that. So, once this layer is depleted extra voltage that apply here between the two of them that goes into the junction. So, delta V g is equal to delta psi of s that is the ideal factor will be equal to 1 this factor will then be equal to 1. So, you get 60 milli volts in double gate MOSFET. Okay. Now, this is just some of the results which have even uh, appeared in textbooks like Collins book. So, sub threshold slope or sub threshold swing both terms are used actually it is inverse slope okay, because we are finding out that okay, we are finding out delta I d by delta V g f, but we use what we understand is for one decade current change how much is the voltage change. Okay. So, you can see sub threshold swing or slope when the S y layer is thick, if the doping is 8 into 10 to the power of 16, when twice y f is there on the front gate, depletion layer width is 115 microns. So, if your gate uh, S y f in thickness is thick 200 microns or here 400 microns, 450 microns, it is partially depleted. Depletion layer width is actually 115 micron nanometer and S y layer thickness is 450 nanometers. So, it is not fully depleted. So, in that case the C effective C d which corresponds to that thickness. Okay. Now, if you reduce the thickness to about 100 nanometers S y layer if this is 400 nanometers it does not deplete by the time it has gone to 115 nanometer depletion layer does not widen, widen, but if this is 100 nanometer it is fully depleted. Okay. So, you will have the capacitance will be series combination of these three and you will get the sub threshold swing very small very close to 60 milli volts per decade. In fact, this number is about 63 milli volts you can never get 1 because you can never get this factor equal to 1 unless you go to double gate operation. Okay. So, you have 63 milli volts per decade. So, what you are telling is if a for a given doping if I keep on reducing the thickness your sub threshold slope will fall and we also saw that threshold voltage also will be smaller for a fully depleted case as compared to that. <coughs> now, these two cases you would see the uh, I d versus gate voltage this is above threshold voltage <coughs> partially depleted case that is 
200 nanometer thick film. You have subthreshold swing of 102 millivolts. What we saw here in this region. When you made it very thin, 100 nanometers, in this case, fully depleted. You have got C effective is C silicon in series with the back oxide, which is very thick. So, you get that. So, very close 63 millivolts per decade, you get. Okay. So, benefits of fully depleted uh, MOSFETs, SOI MOSFET, low threshold voltage we have, saw, we have seen already last uh, lecture, sub threshold swing is very close to the ideal 60 millivolts per decade. What is the benefit of that? Benefit of that if you take here, here the threshold voltage is lower. If the threshold voltage is lower, it enables you to go lower supply voltages. And if the threshold voltage is, is lower and sub threshold swing is ideal to 60 millivolts per decade, it can quickly be turned off. Okay. So, that is why you can use the SOA MOSFET very effectively for low voltages, low supply voltages and that is that means, low voltage and low power applications. So, mostly you will see the application of this is for low power low voltage devices and also there is no latch up we saw that already. Now, this is just reminding you that in the bulk MOSFET depletion layer width is wide, this is a in silicon peak electric field is larger because of that wider depletion layer width and the SOI electric field is like that. This is beyond with the back channel, this is the front channel, electric field is smaller. All that we have seen already. To re emphasize that to so that you recall the diagram, accumulation, that get depleted, both inverted, lower and lower field. Okay. So, when you have this particular situation, you can see that the field in this direction, transverse direction to the channel go back to that and show you what we are telling you the field in that direction from the gate towards the channel that is what we are plotting here that is small when you go to double gate operation when both are inverted. If the field is small now you know that if the transfer field is small at the doping I am sorry the mobility will be high. If the field is higher here in this case accumulation case field is high and the bulk MOSFET field is high transfer field is high because of high doping case and as a result the mobility of the carriers will be reduced because of the transfer field. In this case you can use very lightly doped substrates okay, and therefore, the doping effect is reduced on mobility and double gate when you use the transfer field is reduced therefore, effect of transfer field also is reduced. So, you can get x best mobilities using this type of device. <coughs> this is one of those results which uh, have been reported okay, reported by some of our students uh, when they made the MOSFET with here this was SOI MOSFET with the doping of 10 to the power of 14 into 5 per centimeter cube twice 5 is 0.54 volts. Now, <coughs> XT maximum is 1.2 micrometers, but your T silicon is uh, T silicon is uh, uh, much smaller than that. Okay. In fact, uh, what you have got here is something like uh, let me see where, where it is there. It is just about 4, 400 nanometers or of the total. Let me see where it is there. T ox B W by L is there. T ox Front gate is 115 nanometer, back gate is 400 nanometer, and you have chosen that is again about 87 nanometers, much smaller compared to this 1.2 micrometers. Okay. So, that is the thickness of that. So, it is a fully depleted layer. Now, what we are showing is the transconductance delta I d by delta V g, okay, which would also correspond to the current. As I increase that back gate, these are there are two curves 
the red one corresponding to one of them corresponding to smart cut as well wafer made by smart cut. We wanted to see whether it makes any difference if you use smart cut or Vesoy. So, the black one is the Vesoy wafer practically not much difference when you use the same thickness. Okay. So, I bias the back channel into accumulation where the back gate is minus accumulation front gate is actually inverted. Okay. Only one gate is conducting in fact, threshold voltage will be high in those cases and you will get the current due to one channel and as you increase the back gate voltage from negative to more and more positive side or bring it to 0, back channel come to depletion, okay, your current increases, your fields decrease, threshold voltage decreases, your current decreases. Okay. Now, when you go to a particular bias 0 voltage here, we do not have to go to the details. What we are doing is back channel accumulation, back channel depleted, back channel in inverted. In all the cases front channel is inverted. In this portion you are talking of front channel inverted, back channel taken from accumulation, depletion and inverted. Okay. So, your currents keep on increasing. In fact, I showed you some curve where the transfer characteristics were shown. From that is derived. If you go back to the previous lecture, you will see those graphs. So, what we are trying to point out is the current is maximum when both the channels are inverted. Now, from here onwards, you have a situation where you increase the back channel to plus. So, that back channel is inverted and, and front channel is going from inversion to depletion and accumulation. So, best results you get, best transconductance and best current you get when the both the channels are inverted. That is what I am trying to show from here. Okay. So, this is uh, showing that there is not much difference between the SOI and SOI. There is a transconductance that the maximum transconductance that you get in each device operation. Now, from the transconductance you extract the mobility, you get this maximum current, maximum transconductance because of the best mobility that you get. So, this is a situation where the both channels are inverted. As I pointed out, when the both channels are inverted, the fields are small, transverse field, mobilities are best. So, you get best mobility when the both channels are inverted. They just as the information I have just put it across to you. So, that these are real and maybe the location of uh, best mobility point may have shifted from one device to other device. Okay. Now, this is the red is the mu n of the front channel for the Bessoy wafer and this is the mu n of the back channel. Here, this is mobility of both the channels combined effect, because in this portion we are seeing the front channel inverted, in this portion we are seeing back channel inverted, because back channel voltage is very large. There is a good coupling is there, when you do that, the front channel goes to depletion and accumulation. Okay. Now, to sum up whatever you have said now, fully depleted double gate MOSFET, transverse electric field is low to reiterate therefore, high mobility high transconductance when the both channels are inverted. One more thing that you have we will have to realize is that the so, what we say from here is you can use double gate in the sense both gates you can connect together and have both channels inverted simultaneously that should give you the best mobility because the fields are small in that case. We saw it already in our previous discussion. Okay. So, thin oxide thin SOI layer leads to tight coupling. See if you see oh I am sorry if I put a double gate MOSFET like this I do not know whether you are able to see that. This is the SOI layer, this is the source, channel, drain, front oxide yellow, back oxide yellow, these two slabs show you the gate, the three dimensional picture. So, I can you connect both of them such that both channels are inverted. Now, you can see when will you get the short channel effects? 
we have to imagine or we know that the short channel effects come into picture when the drain begins to affect the potential near the source end. But if the gate distance between the gate two gates okay, the electrical distance between the two gates is much smaller than this channel length. The drain has less control on the channel and near the source region. So, some of the authors like Mindel who were in Stanford at the time, they gave this type of analytical guideline. You will have, you will not have short channel effect if the half the channel length that is from drain to the middle that is half the channel length is greater than this electrical distance half. See when you have uh, two gates you can say that this half is controlled by that this half is controlled by the bottom one. So, what you see is look at the center from the center to the top electrode what is the electrical distance. So, that electrical distance is T silicon by 2 T oxide we multiplied by epsilon S by epsilon oxide to get because of the permittivity difference equivalent to the silicon. So, 3 times T oxide T silicon by 2 if this were silicon of that particular thickness it is the 3 times T oxide. So, that is the equivalent. So, you can see if the channel length is 20 uh, if the T silicon is 20 nanometers what we are telling is 20 by 2 10 and if T oxide is 1.5 nanometers, what is epsilon S by epsilon oxide? 3, 3 times 1.5 that is 4.5, 4.5 plus 10 okay, that is 14.5 uh, okay, L must be more than twice that, that is about uh, 30 nanometers. If L is much larger than 30 nanometers, you will not have short channel effect. And one way of telling that short channel effects are not there is sub threshold swing is 60 nanometers. So, you can see for the 20 nanometer, this is the numerical solution using a software uh, called Medici. They have done, they saw that sub threshold slope is uh, up to about uh, 40, it is uh, somewhere below 70, and it is below 60 nanometer, 60 millivolts up to 60. What we are telling is it should be more than about 30 nanometers. I would say that you must put this as L by 4. Okay. So, if you have a, a 40 nanometers channel length for this condition, you will have some threshold swing of more than 60 about maybe about uh, 70, but in bulk MOSFET you will have about 100 millivolts per <coughs> decade, it is much better than that. But if I reduce the thickness of the SOI layer to 10 nanometers that is reduced. You can see that you can go even right up to about 30 nanometers or 40 nanometers very comfortably 60 millivolts per decade. You can easily go to 30 nanometers still it will be about 65 millivolts per decade. Okay. So, if you want to go even get down to shorter channel length what should you do? reduce the thickness of the SOI layer even further. Go to 5 nanometers, you can go even down. So, the analysis shows ultimately that you can go even down to about 16 nano, uh, nanometer channel length without seeing the short channel effect. What is the other short channel effect seen? One is the sub threshold swing increasing that you can go down right up to what I said is about 20 or 16 if you reduce the thickness below 10 nanometer thickness of SOI layer and oxide layer thickness 1 nanometer. If you are not able to go up to 1 nanometer, change it to the high k dielectric. Now, this is the delta B threshold. If the threshold voltage is about 0 0.5 milli, 0 0.5 volts or 0 0.4 volts, how much is the shift in threshold voltage if you reduce the channel length? This is the simulation. It closely matches this, but it is not very, you would have this much smaller than L. So, you can see if T oxide is 1 nanometer, then 
you will not see the shift in threshold voltage till it is about 20 nanometers, close to about 20 nanometers. We go below channel length, if we go below 20 nanometers, you will see the thing. So, silicon thickness is 5 nanometer, T oxide is 1 nanometer. You can operate it very comfortably up to about 20 nanometers without seeing the short channel effect, which is very hard on bulk MOSFET because then your subthreshold swing everything will get affected because doping is high. Here you can go to very lightly doped material. So, this is the situation advantage is very clear. Now, one more thing point that you want to see is okay, you can use very lightly doped gaze, fully depleted, undoped practically, what will be threshold voltage? So, usually we define the threshold voltage as the gate voltage at which twice phi f is the surface potential, but when you go to fully depleted case it will not be twice phi f and if it is undoped there is no meaning in twice phi f, phi f is 0. So, what they have said is you look at the charge okay, in the channel the, the, these are the potentials inversion that is the potential, if it is undoped case what is the, the uh, potential will not vary across the channel, there is no field there otherwise the slightly varying. So, this ignore that this is inversion the, uh, accumulation it will be close to 0, depletion there will be plus and okay. But what we are trying to point out is you assume certain charge. For example, if I say the total charge per square centimeter looking at the top from the gate is 3.2 into 10 to the power of 10 per centimeter square, what does it mean? An average into T silicon, it is actually a number, it is not charge, it is number. Average, in fact, if the potential is constant there, charge will be constant over the entire width. So, this total charge, if it is about that is what Mindel has shown, you can assume this and say when this charge is reached in the channel, that is the threshold voltage. But strictly speaking, that will not be the case. So, it will amount to an average is equal to ni to the power of this. This is the relation between the potential and the average carrier concentration. So, for intrinsic case, potential is related to charge by this relationship. Background doping multiplied by exponential constant, okay, potential phi s by pt. So, that phi s is given by this equation. See, an average by ni into logarithm of that into k t by q gives you phi of s. So, what you are telling is you find out the phi of s at which the carrier concentration is reaching that value, it is approximate. But if you strictly want to see what you have to do would be you have to I hope I remember this thing you have to go into a plot where the V g versus phi, phi surface. In fact, phi surface will be almost same everywhere that means, carrier concentration will be same everywhere that you consider it as volume inversion entire volume of silicon is inverted. So, if you start V g at 0 potential potential is surface potential is 0. It is shared between the oxide and, this and the junction as you keep on increasing it goes like that. So, you define this voltage V g as a threshold voltage. In fact, in the bulk MOSFET this is actually equal to twice phi f. If you plot in a bulk MOSFET you have used twice f pi f as the threshold voltage condition by seeing that when you keep on increasing that in fact, twice it does not flatten out it goes like that the bulk MOSFET slight increases where it deviates from this portion you will take that thing. But in the case of a soy MOSFET, it almost goes to that point, it will not it this will not be a twice phi f point. You take the phi s at which it saturates, it will not be twice phi f, it is different because you do not know what twice phi f is when the undoped case, there is no twice phi f. Still, you use this condition for that because beyond that what a point, whatever voltage you apply goes to the gate oxide and the entire thing is used for inverting the channel. So, this is the point at which inversion takes place that is the correct definition. In fact, uh, 
we have uh, uh, one of our students here has worked on the thing to define the threshold voltage and a detailed paper has been written on that uh, which has just it is hot from the oven just yesterday we got the information that paper is accepted for a full paper in the journal of applied physics you see. Okay. So, that is that condition there are lot of details involved in that Maybe when it appears you can just uh, see the thing. Okay. So, you can see that there is a difference in defining threshold voltage. Now, there is one very interesting result which people have observed. Some of the authors like Krishna you know, whose paper I will give at the end of this lecture there is a reference which I have given you can see that source train this is the channel which will be fully depleted and when you deplete fully I can operate it as a single gate. How do I operate it a single gate? Single gate mode BGB connected to 0 apply voltage to the gate till the surface front channel, channel is inverted back channel will be in depletion because it is grounded. So, when you have that situation front gate inverted and back gate grounded single gate mode when you operate they get some transconductance like this keep on increase the voltage you know V g minus V threshold keeps on increases and there is a maximum uh, maximum uh, transconductance reaches you have discussed in when you discuss the MOSFET theory. So, transconductance reaches maximum that is about 2 micro siemens is the value for single gate operation. This is related to current delta I d by delta V g. So, that is the value. Now, instead of operating with the front gate I operate with the back gate this is a, a practical result that they observed back gate. How do you do that single gate mode front gate is grounded apply voltage to the gate with respect back gate with respect source V g of 0 you get this sort of characteristics you know the maximum transcontent is almost matching there is slight difference because there is slight difference in the gate oxide thicknesses one is 50 nanometer other is 62 nanometer. Now, when you operate it as double gate both gates bias such that there is inversion at the front and back together what do you expect? you get the current to be the sum of these two and the transcontinence to be the sum of these two, but what you get is much more than that. It is not sum of these two much higher than that you know if this is 2 plus 2 4 you would expect it 4 you get about 8. This is a very interesting result they have observed. So, that means when you use it as a double gate it is not merely the channel current doubles it is much more than that. because the entire volume is conducting not only entire volume is conducting the charges are confined to the center of the channel that portion is there we will see that. So, what is uh, made out here is do not worry about all this number of uh, lines which are drawn this is the front gate this is the back gate oxide this is to explain this phenomena. Okay. Now, if the front gate is inverted the potential is plus here going down to 0. Usually we used to plot it from plus down like that, but now we are putting this way this energy band diagram this is equal to energy band diagram electron energy plus here minus here potential is 0 there potential is plus here. Okay. This we have this, this is the double gate operation single gate operation. Now, you can see when you make it thinner there will be quantization effects etcetera that is there will be splitting of energy levels more than that if you solve the Schrodinger equation and Poisson's equation together the and estimate the carrier concentration if I do not use the Schrodinger equation if I do not take the quantum effect this is the carrier distribution because potential is maximum here minimum here maximum here where it is potential is maximum carrier concentration is maximum 
dotted line here. I hope you are able to see that. Maximum, minimum, maximum. That is the carrier distribution, electron concentration. But your quantum theory tells you that if there is a potential hill from here to there, what is the potential hill? Okay, you have the potential hill corresponding to that. Okay. Okay, so you have the if I talk the channel, this is oxide. Okay. That is oxide. Band gap if you see. Yeah, of course, here you have got the band gap like this. This is the conduction band of this is the E g of oxide, this is the E g of silicon. So, you have got this is like a potential well. So, electrons get confined to this middle because what is the probability of occupation at this point? If the potential hill is very high, okay. I think I have just drawn that. Okay, there is a double line, there is a matter. If the potential hill is very high, the probability of occupation is 0, but this is a finite potential hill from here to here. So, the probability of finding the electron here, okay, the probability of finding the electron here is low compared to finding the is low compared to the probability of finding it here. So, electrons will not be occupying it here. So, instead of electron distribution being like this, okay, instead of electron distribution being like this, it will go I am sorry, like that, that is classical. Now, what it will be? It will be 0 here, it will go like that. So, electrons are confined to the middle of the channel. If the electrons are confined to the middle of the channel, what is the what is the advantage? I have shown this to a different scale, okay. It may go beyond that. These electrons here in the middle do not get scattered by the surface. This is the surface of silicon, surface of silicon. They do not get scattered. Therefore, the mobility at the center get scattered less, mobility is better. Because of that mobility is better when it is like this, the current is much more than the current when it is like this. See here, that is seen in the uh, okay, that is what is shown here. So, electrons are here. Now, the electron, the other curves are all finding out for each wave function. This is the electron distribution like that. It is almost flat here, okay. Here it is 0. So, electrons are confined here. I have shown it in a different scale there in the previous diagram, what I have drawn. This is electron distribution, this is a classical solution. So, here electrons are getting more in the near the surface, they get scattered. Here, most of the electrons are at the middle, they are not scattering. Because of that, you get the transfer entertainment much better when you connect them in a double gate operation, okay. much more than what only one is conducting there. Okay. So, this is again re emphasizing the same thing single gate, double gate, and you have seen the electric fields here, and this is the electron concentration here and electric field in the case of double gate, electric field in the case of single gate, this is re emphasizing that. Now, let us see further. What we saw was if you keep on reducing the chan channel thickness, in the previous slides we saw that the threshold voltage keeps on reducing. Okay? We saw in one of those slides that when you kept on reducing that, it came from dope to undoped, then threshold would take come down low value. Now, when you go to smaller and smaller channel length like 10 nanometers and below, threshold voltage begins to increase. It is not a good news, because you want the threshold voltage to be low, so that you enable low voltage operation. Why is that threshold voltage increasing? Threshold voltage increases because I have shown this potential here, this is the oxide, this is the oxide when the silicon thickness is this much, okay, your 
the conduction voltage will be like that or the energy level will be corresponding that all the energy levels will get shifted up. So, if a quantum well is actually like this and if you reduce it all the energy levels even the ground level will shifted up. Okay? The energy levels corresponding to a smaller well will be higher up. So, whatever energy level is there ground E naught the 0 level ground level will get shifted up. If the ground level is shifted up it requires more energy for electrons to be raised to the conduction band. Therefore, the threshold voltage goes up because you have to have more energy that means more voltage must be applied to raise the electrons to that higher level. So, that is why when you go to thicknesses like 10 nanometers or below threshold voltage goes up. This is seen in single gate, single gate also there is some confinement. See here, there is a confinement here because there is oxide here. So, you get even in single gate you will get threshold voltage increase there. Okay. We are concerned about this double gate MOSFET and SOI, SOI where threshold voltage go down finally, increase because of quantum confinement effect. So, now they have worked out some theory on that analyzed it uh, using the quantum analysis. This delta E naught how much is that delta E naught is a measure of how much is the shift in threshold voltage. So, the delta E naught what they have seen is up to about 5 nanometers not much change in delta E naught it is there. But if I reduce this thickness, I put it as A, it is T silicon, this is the oxide band gap, conduction band of oxide is here. If I reduce this thickness, keeping on keep on reducing, bring it below 4, 3, 2, etcetera, below 3 nanometers, that energy level keeps on going up. That means your threshold voltage will keep on increasing by so many millivolts per nanometer it will rise, rise quite steeply. Okay. So, in fact if you go to small values it may even go up uh, several millivolts I think several millivolts actually. So, volts per nanometer reduction here if it is 3 nanometer 2 nanometer it will reduce it goes up drastically. Why should you worry about that? One thing is you do not like that to increase. More than that, can you make see what we said is keep on reducing the, the thickness, the threshold voltage keeps on falling, that is good. But if you go to 3 nanometers, etcetera, because of this effect, threshold voltage will increase. You may not mind if it remains constant flat there, but it increases, it is bad news from two points of view. 1 threshold voltage is high means your supply voltage must be high. Second one you go to 3 nanometer thin SOI layer you know how hard it is to get 3 nanometer uniformly over the entire wafer thickness 4 nano 4 mic 4 inch that is ok 100 uh, millimeter or a diameter SOI layer or if you want to talk of 8 inch across that entire wafer it is very difficult to get uniformity of 3 nanometer. There may be 3 nanometer 2.5 2.8 like that at least then you can see it goes up like that threshold voltage goes up. If there is uh, 2 nanometer if you choose and then it, it, if it becomes 1 nanometer you can see there is tremendous amount of change in the threshold voltage. So, your entire your uh, digital circuit will be all functioning there. <coughs> Analog circuit no hope. Okay. So, the uniformity in the threshold voltage will be affected if you go to thinner. So, what you are telling is we saw in the previous slide here we saw if you go to thinner and thinner silicon here in this case this was giving 1.5 nanometer 
The question is, we can go to very, very small channel lengths there, but the question is whether we can really get that sort of uniformity. One way of doing that fairly uniformly is go to smart cut. Smart cut you implant the ions at exactly at the region where you want to cleave it. Okay? So, you can get that thing about that value you can get, but it becomes more difficult. So, you can get go to shorter channel length if you go to smaller thicknesses, but there is a limit up to which you can go to shorter channel length. So, that is what we are I am trying to give you the message that do not think that you can go to 5 nanometer etcetera with this approach, okay? because then your thickness of the silicon must be even going to 1 nanometer, which is very difficult to get uniformity. Okay. So, there are varieties of uh, SOI devices that you can get. This is the bulk MOSFET, where you choose all these doping things are there. CMOS, if you have to do, you have to have trench isolation etcetera. And this is the ultra thin body MOSFET. I can use single gate, depletes from the top side itself that is suitable for making uh, maybe integrated circuit, but you can see the difficulty there you have to go to this type of arrangement. Here if I have like this, see the difficulty you say you can make ultra thin or double gate. Now, if I make a double gate like this, this is the SOI layer, I will have oxide everywhere, I must etch the gate from top and bottom like this. I think not uh, possible to realize the integrated circuit. But in one wafer, you got from one end to the other end, you got the wafer, whole thing is connected to one. This is one gate here, back entire thing will be one gate. That means, you must edge from the front, you must edge from the back side. It is not a viable solution. So, the viable solution is go to this, that is the fin fit. Okay? In the fin fret, what you have is, I can show a bigger diagram. This is the one which you can integrate. In the fin fret, you have the buried oxide. Below that, you have got the handle wafer. You have got this source region here, below, and you have got some oxide layer on the top of that, but the yellow is the source region, n plus and you have that shape here and by lithography you define this region the SOI is etched from re this region that is shown by this here. Okay? Now, this is the region between the two. You make this pad big here so that you can contact get contact to the source and drain by lithography etching the oxide from these portions and this layer is actually the fin which I can show it like this. See if I take the go from this side, this is the this portion is between this blue and this blue, a thin fin there. Maybe you can show it to you like this. Okay? If I have a fin like this, like that, there I have the source, here I have the source and this is the fin, I can make it very thin. See, I can make it very thin. How can I make it very thin? By lithography. I can have 1 nanometer lithography, electron beam lithography I can do, I can make it very thin. So, your problem of thickness reduction is sorted out here by making that fin. Okay? Here, it will be like that perpendicular. So, I can maybe, I do not know whether I can draw it uh, separately here. See here. What I have is a fin, fin like this. That is the that is the cross section. When I take there, you get it like this. This is the silicon layer, SOI layer. Okay. Across that, I have this oxide. Now, this thickness, this was the SOI layer, thickness of the SOI layer, 
uh, h to the so layer and this is equivalent of that thickness of the SOI layer which we are talking of front gate back gate there is a gate also here all around there is a gate. So, I think I have to go ok all around I have got the gate here. So, you have got the metal oxide semiconductor metal oxide semiconductor if I take a cross section of the gate. So, let us just see that, but it is going perpendicular to this particular plane like that. So, my source is here. So, if you go to the diagram you will see that clearly. Okay. So, what I have shown is this the gate is going around that. So, you can see here from the source to drain there is a fin a thin layer here perpendicular to that like that. Okay. So, it is like that. Now, surrounding that you have got this gate. What is the W for this case? Channel width. Okay. The channel width is uh, channel width will be this whole thing that is the width. Okay. Channel length is like that they are going like this source is on here emphasis is here emphasis is on this side. So, your gate is going like this usually you have the channel bit like that going source is here chan that is here and your oxide here that is the that is the W. Now, it this is not like the source is here drain is here and that is the W here. So, thickness twice the thickness of the soil layer plus that width <coughs> and this width is equivalent of two gates on both sides compressing is. So, electrons are confined to this portion completely. So, you get total volume inversion in this case. <coughs> okay. So, I hope that is clear. <coughs> so, this is a gate red is a gate metal which is surrounding this portion like this. Now, I have shown here one fin going like this, there are more than one, two, three fins parallelly between this source and this drain. He, this figure shows only one fin. I have more than one fin, one, two, three, if I have there, okay. then you can have uh, a, if I take the cross section here cross section here, if I had only one fin I would have seen this. This is a fin, one fin I would have seen the gate going like that the diagram which I shown before. If I 1, 2, 3 you have got W is increased by that okay? because I, I think it is not uh, cl clear looks like I just have time enough to go through that. Okay. See what we are talking of is you have got between the source and the drain point. Okay. You have a small fin there. If I have a, sorry. Okay. I have I will just remove that, remove that also. I will go into that. That is the point. Now, I have got this. That is the one. I got here like this. Okay. I have got one fin like this, other fin like this, number of them. If you take a gate is like this. So, now you can see that this gate which I had put as red there crossing this crossing that I take a cross section here 
then I will say one here, one like that. Okay? This is what I am trying to show here. So, I take more number of them and you get more than one fin there. So, if I have only one fin, W is corresponding to that, now is 1, 2, 3 fins are there. You can increase the current by putting more number of, equal to more number of channels in parallel. Okay. So, that is the idea about that. In summary, what we have got is fully depleted MOS devices have several inherent advantages over the conventional bulk MOSFET. Okay. Now, like low threshold voltage, ideal sub threshold swing, improved low field mobility, etcetera. And SOIL wafers are also being increasingly used for other applications. For example, MEMS. How can you use it for MEMS? Micro electromechanical system, I can realize a membrane. Okay, that can be done like this. I can use it for MEMS by to realize a membrane. For example, I can use an SO layer there is a SO layer uh, there is a silicon and if I have a oxide here that is SO I can etch silicon from back side okay, by using I think I can put this I can etch it like this, either like this or vertically. But chemical etching, if I use it, will go like that. Vertically, I can etch. This is SiO2. I can etch it. Means actually, what will happen by after etching? You will have this gone. Oh, my God! So what you will have will be the. This will be like this. Okay, you'll get it like that. I can etch the whole thing like this. So, the advantage is by the time the SOI layer is reached, etching stops. KOH etching, if you are using, it will not attack silicon dioxide. If I am using DRI, it will get a shape like this, vertically, deep reactive etching. Then, you will have the silicon here, silicon here, it will stop etching here. What is the advantage? Whatever silicon thickness is here, serves as a membrane this will be very thin say 0.5 micrometers and this can be 10 micrometers. I will have membrane created as a 10 micron. I can use it for sensing purposes. That is why I said you can use it for MEMS very lot, lot more and more number of people are using this device for uh, using it for MEMS and for radiation hardened device also they use it because when you have a layer like that. Okay, whatever radiation impinges, it will cross this layer and whatever electron hole pairs are generated will go to the substrate. It will not generate carriers here. So, that is why radiation hardened devices also are used using the SOI. Okay. Now, we also saw that you can use integration. You can have number of the these devices isolated together to make integrated circuits. CMOS, I can have P channel, N channel, etcetera using this fin fit configuration. Okay. Now, there are number of papers which I have uh, uh, cited here like which have appeared over the several years and I have just put here uh, 2006 as the one that uh, uh, you know that some of the figures which I had given done by some of our students and myself and you can add to this one now today onwards journal of applied physics which where the threshold voltage definition is there. So, with that I think we will stop the SOI discussion, we will go in to the metal metal source chain type of junctions, we will discuss that in the next lecture.